Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Shelly and today I want to talk about why I'm no longer doing the carnivore diet. So let's get into it. I just got some raw milk and yeah, get yourself a drink because I have a lot to say. So for those of you that are new here, um, I did carnivore pretty strictly for about four months uh, starting from August and since then I've been on and off back strict carnivore, not carnivore, animal based, always pretty like meat based. I'm not going to say animal based I guess but in any case the last like seven months I've been pretty like meat heavy and I've been doing pretty good but it's been a roller coaster and like I said, if you're new here, you wouldn't know. I also have celiac disease and I have lupus and hypothyroidism. And so my main goal with going carnivore was to help with my hypothyroidism and get off of the medication. And I know things like this take time. Um, anyways, long story short, um, I every time like I was strict strict carnivore like I said for like four or five months and then I would introduce carbs and it'd be in form of like gluten-free crackers and maybe some fruit or like a granola bar grain-free granola bar and every time I would get instantly bloated and have like autoimmune reaction like swollen and painful wrists and fingers and so I just kept you know, I would introduce the carbs back. I have to stay carnivore. This is just my life now. And anyways, not knowing that with my celiac, you know, I'm very sensitive. I knew that I don't eat out at all, but I always trusted like certified gluten-free items. And I've done other videos on this, but basically the products that I was introducing after like from going carnivore to adding some carbs, all those items were processed in a facility that also processes gluten on the same equipment. And even though they were certified gluten free, I was still like reacting to them, but I didn't realize that companies don't have to label that, that it's processed in a facility with wheat. So anyways, once I figured that out and I only introduced like banana or, um, apple which I did kind of slowly not as slowly as I'd like but I do notice like with apple I get itchy after so I don't eat apple um but with banana I've been fine and with like gluten-free sourdough bread that's from a dedicated gluten-free facility I've added that back in and no swelling in my arms no bloating so I was just like amazed because I kept thinking it was the carbs causing like yes carbs cause inflammation but when you're having a small amount of carbs or just like I guess an app I guess you would still be I would probably still be considered low carb being that it's probably about 80 carbs that I'm having every day but that normally would inflame me and so basically after discovering this I well for one another thing on carnivore I know I've done a previous video on this I would get very constipated and I was drinking apple cider vinegar for a bit and that did help and then it stopped helping so I don't know if that video helped anybody or not but basically yeah I wouldn't go to the bathroom for days and days and even when I would go it would be very difficult and so something just told me you know maybe I need some carbs and I know a lot of people like carnivore people say that you don't need carbs you know your body will produce its own glucose and like there's no need for carbs but for me I personally felt a little better like something just didn't feel right about my digestion being that way and so I I tried really upping my fats because that's what everyone said to do and I just felt disgusting um like I felt like so nauseous and it just felt wrong like I see a lot of the carnivore people and they're eating like a stick of butter a day and I got close to eating that much butter in a day and I did not feel good like that I don't think ancestrally even I don't think anyone was eating a stick of butter so 
I, yeah, I don't really see the need to do that. Um, but I did try it, just so you know, and I did not do well with that. And I tried removing dairy, and dairy wasn't the issue because, um, my, I can go to the bathroom normally now, and I drink raw milk, and I have cheese, and I have ice cream that I make, um, without an issue. So, basically, um, yeah, I wasn't digesting well, so I would add in carbs, and I would have problems with the, the carbs because of the gluten. But now that I've figured it out that I need to have dedicated gluten-free items, and I, like I said, I'm not eating a lot of processed food still. My diet looks like in the morning having eggs with cheese and bacon or sausage and sometimes some sourdough bread, the, the gluten-free sourdough bread with uh, butter on top or avocado. I've noticed I've done okay with avocado and that'll be breakfast and then for lunch I will have something like a half a pound of ground beef and maybe a chicken thigh or just the beef. And then for dinner, I'll have, you know, some type of meat and maybe some rice or maybe a rice noodle and maybe some zucchini, which technically is a fruit, not a vegetable. So still kind of animal based, but not really because I'm having that forms of rice because the gluten free bread is made with rice flour and so are noodles or regular rice is made with rice. Um, so there's a little bit of grain, but I've been doing pretty well eating this way, and again, I've had no bloating. Um, another thing that I, another reason why I needed to stop carnivore was because I just kept losing weight. Like, I, I couldn't control the weight loss, and it, every time I would get back down to, like, for reference, I am 5'9", and, um... Free carnivore was probably about 135 to 140 pounds and going with going carnivore like in my lowest I was like 120 pounds which just I was like a twig too too skinny and like I could tell like I wasn't eating enough I mean not not I wasn't not eating enough I was eating like 3,500 calories including all the butter and the meat and I just could not gain any weight and the weight just kept dropping and so now I'm at like between 126 and 128 depending on the day and that's kind of where I want to be. I like to be like around 130. I don't need to be um, so lightweight. Uh, I'm also currently trying to conceive baby number two and as you can see in my previous video I did carnivore strictly for that week just to like really reset and lower the inflammation in my body. And then since then, this past week, I have, like I said, introduced some carbs back, some fruit, some sourdough bread, and it just feels right. Um, I, I just, I don't want to stick to a diet just to like go with the trend or please, you know, other people. And I really don't want to have like rules either. Even that's why I had animal based. I had carnivore in my bio on Instagram, then I had animal based, and then I was like, I just removed that because no matter what, I'm gonna be gluten free because of my celiac. And I just, I don't wanna, like, with carnivore, like, I made that carnivore ice cream video, and I had so, I had like a couple people, and they're like, this isn't carnivore, there's vanilla extract in here, and like, I, I don't need somebody to tell me what's what's what like a, a, an eighth of a teaspoon per serving of vanilla extract is not gonna kill you unless you're allergic to vanilla so so yeah I mean with carnivore is great I feel like as an elimination diet to figure out to remove everything and then introduce foods back in to see what you're having an issue with um, like I said certain fruits like apple particularly, I get like bumps and itchy on the back of my legs and um, I didn't realize that I was having a reaction to that and like too many strawberries, the same thing. But with a banana, I don't have any reaction. So I wouldn't be able to learn these things if I hadn't cut everything out, you know, removed the inflammation and just started from scratch. 
Um, I do think it was good for, like, it helped my skin, and I feel like it was a good, like, reset, and now I can start over, and, like, I know things with a lot of sugar, like, I'm not having a bunch of sugary things, um, but I know sugar causes acne, and, you know, I don't feel great if I eat a lot of sugar or like a seas candy or something ridiculous like that. I'm like, I'm not eating that. I know how that makes me feel. Um, but if there's a gluten-free cookie that I make for me and my daughter, like I should have that and be fine. And yeah, so that's what I've been doing. I haven't been like consistently eating sugar or anything like that. And I've been keeping my main carb sources from fruit or like the gluten-free bread or rice. And I've been doing well with that. And I think that everyone is different. You know, some people, they have binge eating issues and um, carnivore removes that because you don't crave anything really but meat. Um, and I kind of got in that way. I was like, oh, I could care less about, you know, what I'm eating. But then it's kind of also like a social thing too. Um where I can't even eat out at restaurants because everyone, like, the cross-contamination is just, I, I'm way too sensitive and whatever sauces and everything that restaurants use and the oils, that's another thing. The seed oils, I don't have seed oils and I think that was a huge inflammatory thing that I would have, like, potato chips a lot. And so, but I think when it comes to socially, when I can't even eat out, if I'm going to be at home, I'd like to be able to make cookies with my daughter and eat a piece of the dough or eat a cookie or have what at least my family is having for dinner and make it so that I won't have a bad reaction. But I get when you have, when you're like a binge eater and you know, you're going to eat three tubs of ice cream in one day, um, yeah, I think carnivore, you should stick with carnivore because that is not healthy obviously and if you have things under control then carnivore is a way for you but for me yes i could binge eat junk but never to the point of you know three tubs of ice cream and hiding and eating i never have been like that and i've been a pastry chef well i was a pastry chef and i would eat throughout the day. Like, I would have something here and there, but I would never just, like, shovel icing down my throat or, you know, be crazy binging. So, for me, yeah, that this is why I quit strict carnivore because, for one, my digestion, and for two, just socially, like, and just for myself, like, it's nice to enjoy a cookie now and again. Like, and if I can eat, like, pretty animal-based all day and have a cookie at the end of the day and that be done with it, then that's great. That's good moderation. And I feel like the carnivore diet has kind of reset my palate because there are things that I would want to eat a lot of. Like, I would want to eat candy or, or I could eat a couple cookies. But now it's like... I have my cookie and I'm like, that's enough sugar for me. I definitely don't want to discourage anyone from doing the carnivore diet. I I feel like I'm like one of the rare people who has constipation issues, honestly. I've seen a lot of carnivore people have the opposite, like diarrhea or just have like their digestion improved greatly from carnivore. So really it's very an individual thing if it's going to be a right fit for you and I think just over time um, I've kind of found what the right thing for me is and this is not going to be the same for everybody because not everyone has celiac like me and you know not everyone is going to have to only get items from a dedicated gluten-free facility and that's their way of eating and no problems otherwise like some people just have sensitivity to other foods, like maybe an orange or a banana, like you can't have those, but you're fine with avocado. So it's really to each their own. Um, but yeah, I think over time it's just a lot. I don't, I don't know. It's a lot to just eat meat. There's like so many aspects to it. 
and yeah when like your family too is not eating exactly like you it can make it more challenging for me it wasn't too bad because like my daughter for instance she eats a lot of meat so does my husband he's not anywhere near carnivore um but i would make like a meat base and like i would have a huge serving of meat and then they would have like that would be part of their meal and then i'd make sides and it would be not you know it'd be pretty easy so but now it's like it's kind of nice to enjoy the other things and i do still think that vegetables like w between seed oils and certain vegetables like leafy greens i think i cannot have those still because like i said uh in my last video i had in and out burger and i literally felt like i was dying i had stomach pain for three days straight i hadn't had any leafy greens since august and it is mid-march right now so yeah, I I do think that there's a lot of anti-nutrients in a lot of the vegetables and like all the vegetables. <laughs> and I have found that I do better without vegetables, but I do enjoy the fruit and I haven't had reactions to fruit, well, specific fruits I have, but not every single fruit is the same. So, in any case, that is why I quit carnivore and that is what I'm doing now and I plan on making more videos about my trying to conceive journey and also just gluten free videos and recipes because like I said I was a gluten free well not I am gluten free I was a pastry chef and I would make regular stuff and gluten free um, but I was getting sick from working with the flour that's how sensitive I am so, but in any case, I have a bunch of gluten-free recipes and a bunch of yummy things that we can make, especially now that I'm not doing strict carnivore. So, yeah, I look forward to seeing you guys in uh, the, the next videos, and if you like this, please subscribe and give it a like. I would love that, and I'll see you in the next